Notre Dame is number one. Notre Dame with a miracle win is a He's clock going clock. in. Notre Dame has scored. With temperatures in the 60s and near-perfect conditions in evidence on the Cotton Bowl's new natural grass field, the Irish and Aggies prepared to square off and answer some of the questions hanging in the balance. How would Notre Dame, and especially its defense, respond coming off the loss to Boston College? Just how good was this Texas A&M team that came in with nine straight wins to its credit? Could the Irish recapture the magic that had earned them the number one ranking the week after defeating top-ranked Florida State? Notre Dame sent a message to the Aggies on the first possession of the football game. The Irish hadn't lost their touch. Junior tailback Lee Becton, who went on to be named the game's outstanding offensive player, got things rolling with an 11-yard gain on the first play from scrimmage. Junior fullback Ray Zellers converted on a third down out to the 32. After a Texas A&M sack, Texas native Michael Miller turned the corner for a 19-yard gain. A penalty prompted another first down for Lou Holtz's squad. Then on third and four from the Aggie 37, the Irish attempted their only pass on the 13-play drive, with Kevin McDougal hitting Derek Mays for 16 yards to the 21. On second and eight, McDougal's option attempt found the mark. Second down and seven and a half. Play action big, option right, McDougal 20, 15 down to the 10, headed for the five, cuts back, end zone, touchdown! What a nifty run by Kevin McDougal. Uh, when I came out on the option, I was expecting for the, the defensive end to attack me and I was gonna pitch it to Lee, but he kinda uh, stepped outside, so I figured I could get up inside of him and get some yardage. And, I just kept running, the daylight just stayed there, and I, I just ran a touchdown for him. With Kevin Pendergast's conversion, the workmanlike 91-yard drive knocked nearly seven minutes off the clock, providing a 7 to nothing lead for the Irish at the 8.01 mark. In 1993, the Texas A&M offense self-destructed against the Irish. Would history repeat itself? The Aggies botched the snap from center on the very first play. On second and one from the 45, senior safety John Covington nearly came up with the interception. But there would be no deja vu in this year's Cotton Bowl. Corey Pollock threw for 47 yards during the drive, and A&M nodded the score with an eight-yard TD run at the 356 mark. Penalties halted the next Irish attempt, and Texas A&M went back to work on offense. of their 22 starters from a year ago are back play action folks. Deep over the middle, this pass is caught by Mitchell. First down, a and And Jeff Burris, the All-America safety, makes the stop for Notre Dame. The Aggies worked their way to a first down at the Irish 22. On third and 10, Lou Holtz called for an Irish blitz, ending a and offensive threat. Texas A&M was forced to attempt a 39-yard field goal on the last play of the first period. Cornerback Bobby Taylor, a Texas native, came up big for the Irish. It was the third blocked field goal of the season for the sophomore All-American. You know, they were driving the ball down the field on us, and uh, we just, you know, had to bore our necks. And, um, you know, the people on the front line, Brian Young, um, Jim Flanagan, and Brian Hamilton, I mean, they got a good push back, and me and Jeff jumped up, and, you know, luckily we blocked the um, ball. With the Irish limited to 24 total yards in the second period by a pursuing A&M defense, the Aggies managed to take a 14-7 halftime lead. And it's second down, and Dan Bullock to throw. Lots of time. Scrambles, now he throws. Pass is complete. Tight end, Greg Short, first down, 35-yard line. Greg Hill is the tailback. He comes to the outside, cuts back at the 50, slides just a little bit. He's going to pick up about nine, maybe nine and a half yards. Good projection over the middle, pass is complete. Tony Harrison. Play action fight. Has it in wide open, touchdown. It marked the third time in the last four games the fourth-ranked Irish had trailed at halftime, and the A&M lead sparked some interesting halftime conversations. 
it was a matter of pride uh, in the second half. We only had 30 minutes left to play, and you know, the guys just wanted to play hard and go out as winners. I told the players at halftime, I'm going to give you a chance to win. We're going back to Notre Dame football. And we just challenged our players a little bit more at halftime. We, we didn't do anything really special. We probably came after them a little bit more, but I didn't think we played very inspired football the first half. I thought we did come back and play with more emotion the second half. Hey, give me 22 guys that want to play the game. I don't care who they are, but whoever's going to be out there and represent Notre Dame, that's all I want to do. I want to play some enthusiasm, motion, and our defense set the tempo with the first three downs to start the second half. The Irish defense emphatically set the tone, helping regain the momentum for Notre Dame on that first series of the third period. Taking its cue from the defense, the Irish offense marched 51 yards, all of it on the ground, to tie the score. Lee Becton added to his rushing total with runs of 13 yards, and then 10 more to the A&M 2. From there, McDougal handed it to Ray Zellers. McDougal. Here's the handoff. Zellers, left side, touchdown! First drive of the second half, we came out. The first two drives, we came out and just ran the ball right at him, right at him, right at him. And uh, classic Notre Dame football. When Coach Holtz goes back to that, uh, we do off the off the well. Trying to recapture the momentum they enjoyed in the first half, Texas A&M responded. And the throw off of the coach is complete. Play action fake. Has a man wide open and of course, the fullback with his second reception of the ball game. And McElroy jumps to the outside. Another move to the outside. He's to the 10, the 5, and he is down around the 3 yard line going 80 yards in only three and a half minutes to make it 21-14 at the 6.50 mark of the third quarter. But the Irish counterpunched, Lou Holt style. Starting from their own 35, Lee Becton bounced off a couple of Aggies for 15 yards. Kevin McDougal added 10 more to the A&M 40. Then it was back to Becton for nine yards. On second and one, McDougal found Zellers for 18 yards, the longest Irish reception to that point. After Becton and Jeff Burroughs pushed the football to the Texas A&M two, Paul Fela handed to rookie Mark Edwards to tie the score. Burris left halfback, give it to the freshman, fullback Edwards, touchdown! Mark Edwards out of Norwood, Ohio. As time ran out in the third period, the Notre Dame defense reasserted itself. Jim Flanagan led a host of Irish in stopping Greg Hill for a loss of one. Continued Irish pressure forced a Corey Pollock incompletion. Next, Bryant Young harassed the A&M sophomore. Finally, Ronaldo Wynn's penetration helped limit the Aggies to a gain of three on third and 13. A&M's ensuing punt left the Irish with their worst field position of the game, and the opportunistic Aggies sensed an opening. But the Irish proceeded to dig themselves out. It was McDougal's 36-yard throw to Lake Dawson that provided the breathing room. The Irish had maintained all-important field position in what proved to be a critical moment in the game. But still, the Irish were forced to punt. And again, it was left to the Notre Dame defense to answer the call. On first down, Brian Hamilton dispatched Greg Hill for a loss of 11. Three plays later, Thomas Knight again made life difficult for Hill. From the Aggie 49, senior linebacker Pete Bursage filled the passing lane perfectly and picked off Pollock's throw. 
ending the vital field position struggle as the clock continued to wind down. But here the A&M defense stiffened and the previously suspect Irish defense was called on again to make a stand. They rose to the challenge. A solid stop by Bobby Taylor forced an Aggie punt with four minutes left on the clock. And Mike Miller, another native Texan, and the Notre Dame punt return team turned in the play of the game. Spiral coming down. Miller says, I'll make the catch does at the 40. Gets to the 45. Gets to the 50. Open field, 40. 10 to the 35. 30 to the left sideline at the 25. And out of bounds at about the 22. 31-yard return by Mike Miller. Lee Becton quickly gained eight yards down to the A&M 14. But after failing to draw the Aggies offside on fourth and two from the 14, on came senior kicker Kevin Pendergast to attempt a 31-yard field goal. Snap, spot, kick is up, it is good! And Notre Dame has taken the lead on a 31-yard field goal by Kevin Pendergast. The Irish led 24-21 with 2.22 left on the clock, but the game was far from over. Texas A&M's first down run by Rodney Thomas ended suddenly, as did the Texas A&M drive, thanks to a momentum swinging hit by Jeff Burroughs and a recovery by Bobby Taylor. Unable to gain a first down, the Irish punted to the Aggie end zone, leaving A&M one final shot with 1.10 on the clock. Would the defense hold this time? Irish fans held their breath in anticipation of a third photo finish as A&M came to the line of scrimmage. A first down pass completion took A&M into Notre Dame territory. The roller coaster ride continued, but then Jim Flanagan got a significant portion of that yardage back with a huge second down sack. Greg Lane held the Aggies at bay with a key knockdown on third and 17. Then on fourth down from the Aggie 41, A&M pulled out the hook and ladder play, but Tony Harrison's wild pitch to Leland McElroy finally bounced into the hands of senior Jeff Burroughs, and the Irish triumph was assured. Notre Dame's victory in many ways came about in typical fashion. For the fifth time in the last six games, the Irish did not turn the ball over offensively. Thanks to Notre Dame's veteran offensive line led by senior Aaron Taylor, Lee Becton was able to grind out 138 yards rushing in the game. The Irish defense came up big as well. In the second half, the unit held A&M to only 25 net rushing yards. The effort couldn't have pleased Notre Dame's head coach more as he spoke privately to the team in the locker room. To go out there and answer challenge after challenge, you beat a heck of a football team out there. That was tremendous. The second half, we played like we should. We had an enthusiasm, but a togetherness, so many great plays, just tremendous. And now we're going to reap part of the rewards. I want the captains to come on up here. The second year in a row, we're extremely proud of you. On behalf of the Cotton Bowl Athletic Association, we're just really proud to present you guys with the Field Scope Championship Trophy, uh, symbol symbolic of the Mobile Cotton Bowl Classic. So thanks a lot for a great game, guys. Uh -huh. we love you. Uh -huh.